If there's one thing I'm good at after almost a decade of being a software engineer, it's most definitely creating. I started off as a simple dev for my Hustle Robotics team back in 2016. Then I went into researching the human consciousness at UCLA as a research engineer. Then at the age of 19, I interned at NASA as a computer engineer. Afterwards, I went into the private sector and started working as a software engineering consultant, professionally ending my career as a manager in the Fortune 500. Throughout this entire journey, I had the opportunity to lead multiple multi-million dollar projects and work with diverse stakeholders at Fortune 500 companies. Today, I am a business owner as well as entrepreneur, and I see a lot of parallels between this life, so the life of an employer, and the past life, which is the life of an employee. So what I want to do today is make a video for those of you who are already software engineers, those of you who want to become software engineers, and for those of you somewhere in the middle. I don't want to make any promises, but if you actually take notes on everything that I talk about here, there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to make more money than you're already making now, or be in a better situation than you already are by the end of this video. So let's jump straight into it and actually get started. Now, the first piece of wisdom that I have for you is to really define what a software engineer is. You see, most of us call ourselves software engineers, but we don't particularly really know what it is that we do, or rather I should say what it is that we should do. If you ask the regular person what a software engineer is, they will probably say something like, oh, somebody who knows how to code or somebody who make software. Now, these definitions aren't necessarily incorrect or wrong, but they are most definitely incomplete. You see, the most fundamental role of a software engineer is to create. And the reason this is so powerful to understand is because it dates back to pretty much the creation of mankind. Now, whether or not you're religious, that is besides the point of this video. The connection that I'm going to make here is actually described in Genesis 1 when it says God created the heavens and the earth. The first thing we know about God is that, you know, he's not this all-powerful figure, omnipotent, omnipresent, but rather that he is a creator and that we, as humans, were made to be the same as him. So we were made in the image of him. So if being a creator sort of has this divine nature attached to it, and we as software engineers, I would say, are the best creators in the modern era, and we are creators by heart, what does that mean for all software engineers across the world? Well, that means that our role in society is actually a lot more important than people might think. The power you have at your fingertips to be able to just smash keys on a keyboard and a unique combination of that can create a piece of software that will change millions of lives is, by the literal definition of the word, crazy. Most software engineers are simply not aware of this nature. And if they are, they do not really understand just how important it is. You see, your value as a software engineer isn't defined by what languages you know, by what tech stack you use, by how many years you've been a coder, and so on and so forth. Your value as a software engineer is judged through a lens of a creator. What do you create? How many lives does it impact? And to what degree? So to expand on this, you have to understand that as a software engineer, you're in one of the only professions in the entire world where the marginal cost of replication is zero. If you are a chef, you have to cook every single meal from scratch. If you are a doctor, you have to see every single patient. But as a software engineer, you write the code one time and that creation can pretty much be deployed to serve one person or one billion people across the world without you ever having to lift a finger again. Now, obviously you'll do some maintenance work, but you get my point. So this is the leverage that kings and emperors of the past would have literally killed for and went on and started wars for. So when you realize this, you stop obsessing over whether you use the perfect tech stack and you start obsessing over whether the thing you created actually matters to people. Will they pay for it? Does it solve a pain point? So this shift in perspective is critical because workers in today's world are commodities, but creators are indispensable. And that is my entire point with this, what is a software engineer? If you treat your career as just simply much, oh, I close tickets or I bug fix, you are disrespecting the power that you actually hold. And you have a duty to not do that, not only to yourself, but the rest of the world. 
Now, the second piece of wisdom I want to talk about has to do with the fact that you can just do things in this world. A lot of software engineers that I have interviewed, over a thousand at this point, I have seen that there's a subconscious limiting belief that is pretty much put on most software engineers. Now, this is largely coming from the life we observed growing up. Some of these can be attributed to family, some society, then some simply to the path our life has crossed. But nevertheless, we all have to understand that our experience is only a part of objective reality, not necessarily the entire thing itself. If this is objective reality, then this little dot here would be what you have experienced. Many software engineers see this manifest in a mindset of not being able to make an income outside of a traditional employer, so outside of a nine to five. Too many software engineers think that the startup world simply isn't for them or that entrepreneurship is too risky or it's only dedicated to the really smart or lucky or talented people. And as a business owner now, I just have to tell you that this is literally the furthest thing from the truth. Personally speaking, I have seen folks in trades who can barely speak English down here in Southern California, making upwards of almost $400,000 a year as roofing, solar, and fence salespeople. The same exact individuals probably wouldn't even be able to operate a simple smartphone to its fullest extent. Now, I'm not saying this for me to berate them, I'm not saying this to make fun of them, but rather the opposite. These individuals are able to make a surgeon's salary with literally just a few skills in their back pocket. And fundamentally speaking, they are missing the divine nature of a creator that all of us software engineers have. So this largely really has to do with the vehicle that one chooses to pursue. No matter how skilled of a rider you are, if you go on a bike and try to get to, let's say, somewhere 50 miles from here, I will still beat you to your destination that is far, far away if I am in a vehicle or I'm in a plane. So the problem lies in understanding how far you have to go, so the distance you have to cover, your destination, and which vehicle is best fit to take you there. The salespeople that make this $400,000, they know where they have to go, and they know what vehicle can take them there, which is that exact sales job. But the reality for most of us software engineers is that we pretty much have a Ferrari and we're driving it in a school zone under a 25 miles per hour speed limit. We have this incredible engine, our brain and our technical ability, but we are constantly throttling it by choosing a vehicle that caps our speed. And that vehicle is usually a W2 job where your reward for hard work is literally just more work. Meanwhile, the same people selling solar panels is in a vehicle with uncapped upside. He might not be as smart as you in academic sense, and he might not know what binary tree is or what algorithms are, but his vehicle allows him to capture value directly from the market as opposed to you who has to work overtime and still not get paid. So you need to realize that intelligence alone does not and it will not ever make you rich or financially free. The container that you put that intelligence in does. And here is pretty much the most important part about all of this. We often trick ourselves into thinking that because what we do is hard, we deserve to be paid the most. But this is a lie that the education system actually sold us on. The market does not care how hard it was for you to invert that binary tree. The only thing the market cares about is value exchange and results. Whether it took you 10 hours or one hour or one second, doesn't matter as long as the result is there. And the roofing salesman, the solar salesman understands this intuitively. They say, if I provide a roof, you give me money. But engineers get lost in the complexity of it all, thinking that the money is in the difficulty, but it's simply not. The money is in the utility of what you do. Once you detach your ego from the difficulty of your work and you attach it to the vehicle of your work, be it business, sales, marketing, equity, ownership, negotiation, communication, whatever the case, you will realize that you have been playing the game on pretty much hard mode for no reason at all. Every single one of you watching this have the skills to build the plane. So you need to stop riding the bike and actually hop on a plane so you can get to where you need to get to. And of course, last but not least, the third piece of wisdom that I have for you that took me almost a decade to really realize and this is the most important one of everything we talked about, is that technical people and non-technical people live in completely different worlds, far, far apart from one another. And you cannot truly even imagine it unless you see what I'm seeing with my own eyes in person as I 
talk with all these non-technical business owners. I say this because throughout my career, the number one leverage that I had that brought me the success that I have today, whether it was a promotion to my nine to five or my business success, it was due to me being the one person who can connect the technicals to the non-technical people. So whether it was for selling purposes, marketing purposes, whatever the case. At its core, it was due to my communication abilities where I was able to connect technical outcomes and solutions to non-technical business outcomes and people. You see, the technical mind is obsessed with the how, and that's one of the biggest weaknesses for us software engineers. We worry about scalability, latency, clean architecture, and the specific tech stack that we're gonna use. Now, these are still important, but the non-technical world, the CEOs, the clients, the investors, the people that will actually be giving you the money, they're obsessed with the what and the why. They generally do not care about the elegance of your code. They don't care about the elegance of your tech stack, how good the code looks on the back end. All they care about is the elegance of the solution in relation to their bottom line. Does this actually work? And if so, how much money does it make me? How much time does it save me? Most engineers will make the mistake of trying to impress non-technical stakeholders with technical complexity. But you have to understand that for them, this does not matter. They'll talk about microservices and APIs and all this stuff. And the stakeholders will pretty much just literally look at you like you're crazy. The wisdom here is to understand that your technical skills are simply the tool to get the job done, but your communication is the bridge that will deliver the value of that tool. If you cannot explain to a business owner how your code makes them money, saves them time, or reduces their risk, you will never ever be successful as a software engineer and you will always be undervalued. And this is true both in a nine to five sense as well as as an entrepreneur. You will always be just a developer. But if you can translate your technical leverage into specific business outcomes, you suddenly, with a snap of a finger, become a strategic partner. And that's exactly how you're gonna skyrocket through the corporate ladder or land high ticket deals as a software engineer with your own startup or whatever it is that you're gonna do. So you need to think of yourself as a translator between two nations. On one side, you have the business people who operate on, let's say, fear, time and profit margins and risk. And on the other side, you have the technical people, the engineers who operate on logic, constraints, system integrity, and, so, and security. And if you simply stay on the engineering side over here, you are pretty much just another developer to them, just another resource to be managed. But if you can walk across that bridge over to the other side and explain to the CEO that refactoring this code base isn't just technical work, but it's actually going to reduce, let's say our churn rate by 15% by speeding up page loads, you now suddenly become the most important and valuable person in that room amidst all the other engineers. Even if you're not the one pulling it off, even if somebody else is pulling it off. Because now you are speaking their language. You are connecting the dots that they cannot see. And I'm telling you, this is literally the secret sauce to a seven figure or if not even more success. It's not about being the best coder in the room. It never was as a software engineer. Coding is only a tool for us. The biggest Secret is that it's about being the person who can articulate why our code matters. And when you master this, when you can truly articulate why your code matters, you can connect it to the non-technical individuals, you stop having to ask for permission to build things. And you can just literally start getting invited to the right tables at the right time where the decisions are made and you can actually go along with it. So you move from being sort of like a pair of hands to being a strategic brain that every single person will value. And that is the difference between a senior engineer who has a cap salary and has been at that company for decades and a CEO or a founder who writes their own paycheck month to month. So to kind of wrap everything up, you need to realize that the code is really the easiest part. We can all learn syntax, we can all read documentation, but true success in this field as a software engineer, if you want to be the best of the best, the kind that will get you to that seven figure range, if not more, has to come from a shift in your identity. It comes from accepting that you are a creator with the power to build worlds from scratch. It comes from realizing that the vehicle that you choose literally determines your destination more than your hard work does. And it comes from the ability to translate that immense technical power that is pretty much inside your brain into a language that the rest of the world can understand and value and not get confused about. So I urge you, Please don't be just a coder. Be a creator, be an owner, and be a bridge to non-technical people. That is exactly how you will win as a software engineer. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then I hope you have a good one.